Dag nabbit, I just realized we've been talking a lot more about Conria than I could have possibly imagined, huh? Ain't that swell. Today, we discuss a possibility, a possibility that answers an age-old question we've had since it was, well, it wasn't, it was never, it was never posed, but, you know, it was brought up and never answered because the writers or whoever weren't specific enough. Who cursed the Conrians to immortality? It's long been a mystery because even though it's been brought up numerous times, no one has ever blamed any one or group specifically for bestowing this curse upon them. The closest we ever got was either the sibling blaming the heavenly principles for Kari Bear. Even as a hilly churl, seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world, even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the Heavenly Principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. But given her spiel is laced with hypocrisy and a purposeful misconstruction of the facts, I'm tossing that shit right out the window. And my biases aside, <laughs> <laughs> she is speaking of the curse of the wilderness, which we know had nothing to do with the cataclysm. The other time a culprit was almost named was when Kari Bear's father, Clothot Alba, <laughs> was speaking of the curse and simply said vile gods. This wretched curse of immortality. Who knows how long I must continue to suffer like this. The curse. <laughs> it was a little gift given to the people of Conria by those vile gods. But given he calls a fellow Conrian Vetterful near a god, again tossing that shit right out the window. So it's always been a mystery. Who cursed the Conrians? to immortality. Now, for one to be capable of cursing an entire nation of people, they must be in possession of considerable power, and given we know the Almighty, the Heavenly Principles himself was active during the Cataclysm, that could indeed be a candidate for someone powerful enough to levy the curse, but the Heavenly Principles weren't the only powerful force active 500 years ago, because the Abyss was too, and so were the Sinners. Now, it's not just these two that were active, because the Shades very well could have been two. Our beloved sustainer of heavenly principles. Cubes are seen throughout Conria, or is this Sumer? What, 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 what is this, actually? Does anyone know? Kinda looks like Mondstadt. Here's a fun fact. Immortality is the inversion of mortality, which naturally ends in death. Into that, there just so happens to be a ruler. No, a god of death, who, as a Shade, wields incredible power. Was Renova the Shade of Death the one who cursed the Conrians to immortality? To some, it could be that following the end of 5.1, the answer is yes. What do I mean? You guys remember, right at the end of 5.1, the captain ventured underground to speak once more with the Lord of the Night, yo Huda bitch. The power that the Pyro Archon used to strike back at the Abyss came from the Ruler of Death. From what I know of her rules, she will demand death in return. How do you know this? I see. So, the ruler of death sent you on your long journey. Hmm, interesting wordplay. So it was the ruler of death who sent the captain on his, quote, long journey. Now, before the perfectionists come barging in here and CN, it still says the ruler of death sent the captain on his long journey word for word. Now, it's time for us to put our literary hats on, use some context clues, and try and deduce what Yo Huda bitch meant by this statement. The English teachers among us who see meaning in every syllable of every word might see long journey could symbolically mean immortality. I mean, what's a longer journey than one that's never ending? We know the captain is from Conria, and we know he suffers from the curse of immortality, so this would all make sense. Renova has messed with the cycle of life and death in other nations, namely Notlon, with the Ode of Resurrection allowing people to die 
and come back to life. Now, given this so greatly angered the heavenly principles, there is not a doubt in my mind that even if Renova did inflict this curse of immortality on the Conrians, she only did so at the behest of God himself. Here's the problem I'm having with this, you know, this whole argument. And it's context. Within the context of what this conversation was about, the captain reveals he knows a lot more about the shade of death than what should be permissible if his only contact with said shade was her applying an overarching curse on his nation. What do I mean? For starters, even knowing of the shade's existence is in and of itself a impressive feat given they simply like to remain in the shadows. Even if the shade of death stopped caring at a certain point, still, few know of her. They do not like being mentioned by name by any living being, be it an ordinary human or one of the seven. They prefer to remain in the shadows as shades. She succumbed to self-pity as a result, and no longer cared if others discussed her identity. Even so, her existence remains unknown to all but a select few. So putting aside the fact he knows she exists, there's also the problem of he knows her rules. He knows she has power that can be lent, and he knows the price of using said power, and it's death. How could he have possibly gleaned this information from Renova applying a curse to his entire nation, something I doubt she would have even had to tuck and show up or reveal her existence for. And I mean, even if she did, I thought the bitch just descended and just went, all right, guys, I have a speech prepared here. I'm gonna curse every single one of you. My name is Renova, by the way. I'm the Shade of Death. Fun fact about me, I can give people my power and rules dictate that if one uses my power, they die. Alrighty, you are all cursed now. Good day. I, it, just, it just seems a little convoluted to me. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just having trouble reconciling the fact that the captain may have gained personal information on the Shade of Death through an impersonal act on her parts that was done to him. Me personally, again, this is this is, you know this is a this is the forum Romanum bitch. But me personally, I mean this. I, I I took this you know statement to mean Renova sent the captain on a journey. A journey for what, my friends? Well, if the captain does indeed host souls in his body, then that could be the journey. While I propose the captain may have souls in his body, I never really gave an explanation as to why that could be the case. Well, this could be it. Renova, who did some fucking miracle shit to the captain, allowing him to host souls. I mean, realistically, you know, he's got to have some sort of fucking method, right? I mean, look, the, the, the nigga dead spoke about lost souls in his conversation with Yehuda Cancel. I, I don't know. Maybe he's out, you know, collecting Conran's souls because they became scattered after the cataclysm and he wants to return them home. That's that's something he'd do. He's an honorable man, I'm telling you. Now, the biggest question then becomes how did the captain come into contact with a shade? Yeah, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Not even one dog. I mean, maybe the nigga prayed, who knows? Maybe they answer prayers every now and then. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the matter. I'm rarely right, though, so, you know. And I'm biased. And I'm racist to dragons. And I'm gonna be eating pasta in a bit. Any Italians among us? Anyway, make of all that what you will. It's the forum, guys. It's a forum.